SmackDown! Or should I call it the Kane and Dave O'Brien show? Well, the show started off with Hall of Famer, Edge, making a return. He was pretty much promoting the fact that he's going to be on the new sci-fi show or the new season, Haven. I don't watch the show, but hey, good for Edge that he could do other stuff. And he's out there and he's talking about Dave O'Brien and Kane and how crazy it is that they're a tag team, which I agree with him. Then Dave O'Brien comes out and they get into some type of a mini argument going on. Kane comes out, and when Ed's brought up his history with Kane, I was like, yeah, that's a bad idea. I thought Kane was going to do something to him. But what he did was he gave him a hug. <laughs> Which I said last week on my SmackDown video when Kane hugged Kofi Kingston that I thought this hugging thing was just like, ugh, really? And I still kind of think, like, sort of what Ed said. You're a big red machine. Why are you hugging people? But at the same time, maybe it was because it was with Edge, but I found that funny. And then when Daniel Bryan was flipping out, saying no, and then they said, oh, come on, bring it in for a group hug. And they were going to do it until Damien Sandow interrupted them, talking trash. And Ed said, you know what, you want to talk to Smack? Well, how about you fight either Kane or Daniel Bryan? Let the fans decide. They came back from break, and it was Kane versus Damien Sandow. Decent match. I like seeing, you know, match I've never seen before, Kane and Damian Sandow. Daniel Bryan was out there at ringside. For some stupid reason, he cost Kane the match. He took both the belts, distracted Kane, saying he was the tag team champions. Kane got pissed, got caught by Damian Sandow, and lost the match. Then Kane backstage is pissed off looking for Daniel Bryan. Can you blame him? He finally does, he finds his doctor first, Dr. Shelby, who's trying to calm him down. Then Daniel Bryan, who was like hiding in the, the safe or chest, whatever that's called. And Dr. Shelby somehow, some way knows how to talk to not only Daniel Bryan, but he's able to calm Kane down. I, I don't think I ever would have seen someone be able to calm Kane down by words. But he did it, and he got Daniel Bryan to give the belt back, and he said he'll get... Daniel Bryan a match on the show later on. Theory? I swear this guy's a saint. He's better than Dr. Phil, that's for sure. Then Alboyo Del Rio is in Booker T's office and he's holding Booker T's book, which I'm like, Booker T made a book? Really? Huh. And he's complaining about how he wants another title shot. Really, Alberto? What the fuck? You don't deserve another title shot. You don't. You've had four. This would be your fifth in a row. Fuck you, Alberto. You're out of the title picture. You should be out. But Booker T says, you know what? You have your chance to do it in a match later on with, you know, teaming with Dolph Ziggler, fighting Randy Orton and Sheamus. I'm like, you're going to give him a shot or a chance to become the more contender? Bullshit. Is there anyone else on the show that could get a title shot? I guess not. Then we get a Divas match. Layla versus Natalia. And great, Eve is on commentary. Yay, Eve gets more TV time. Uh, Natalia, it's a random match. Um, Layla beats Natalia pretty easily, which sucks. Because Natalia, one of the best Divas wrestlers that they have, gets treated like... Who? Who is she? Yeah, whatever. Eve... The whole, oh yeah, I had nothing to do with Caitlyn being involved. In fact, I wish her well. I hope she comes back. And fake Eve, fake ass Eve, full of shit. Um, then, surprisingly, the tag team match wasn't the main event. Abel Del Rio and Dolph Ziggler versus Sheamus and Randy Orton. When they were coming out, I'm like, what? How is this not the main event? Seriously. It was a good tag team match. I enjoyed it. Especially the ending where... Uh, Randy Orton hit the RKO when I brought Del Rio. Warned Sheamus about Dolph Ziggler with the briefcase that Vicky gave him. And then he gets caught with the bro kick and they got the win. I'm a little pissed off that I swear Alberto never loses like a match on Raw SmackDown. He'll, they'll give him a loss on the pay-per-view or a world title match. But notice how on Monday CM Punk was the one that got pinned. Tonight Dolph Ziggler gets pinned. When does Alberto get pinned? When? When? Who is this fucking guy? How does he get away with all that? Then, I guess Dr. Shelby was able to get Daniel Bryan a match with Cody Rhodes. And I was initially like, fucking A, Daniel Bryan and Cody Rhodes, this match should be off the chains, right? 
But the match was nothing, almost, because Kane immediately comes out to distract Daniel Bryan, does the fire thing, and Cody Rhodes hits the crossroads and wins. It was a short match, and I initially was like, that sucks. I really want to see them go at it and have a good match, but it was just for Kane to get his payback. Then Daniel Bryan is backstage looking for Kane, pissed off, rolls are reversed, Kane's laughing at him. Then over there you see Damien Sandow and Cody Rhodes laughing at them. And you get a short moment of unity between Kane and Daniel Bryan. And they challenge Sandow and Rhodes. They're like, why don't you guys fight us tonight? I'm sitting there like, they're going to wrestle again? Jeez. These guys just took over the show. And are we going to get a new forum tag team between Damien Sandow and Cody Rhodes? I don't know what was going on there. Then a uh, random, or actually a rematch from Monday night, Brodus Clay versus Heath Slater, and I was just like, oh, wow, Heath Slater's gonna job again. But shockingly, Jinder Mahal and Drew McIntyre come out and attack Brodus Clay, and it looks like we have a new job squad. The job squad, you guys remember them? If you don't, this was a group back in 1999. It was Hardcore Holly, Al Snow and the Blue Meanie and they basically came together like three of the most random guys ever right yeah well they basically came together because they were losing most of their matches I don't want to say every match but most of their matches they would lose so they finally just came together one day and said you know what we're sick of being jobbers we're gonna come together call ourselves the job squad and we're going to use our anger of losing all the time to beat guys up. And that looks like what we're doing here. Jinder Mahal doesn't lose that much, but he has lost to Ryback a couple times. Drew McIntyre hasn't won a match since 2010. Um, and he Slater wins rarely, but, you know, the whole Legends thing, he's been losing a lot. So, hey, if that's what they're going to do, I doubt they'll use that name. It's a, it's a fucking epic name, but they'll never use it. If that's the idea, though, that we're going to get, at least we're doing something with these guys. And hey, Drew McIntyre is finally going to get on TV, possibly. I love it. I think it's a great idea. I'm all for it. And Antonio Cesaro versus Santino Morella, I, I hardly know what to say about this. First of all, the match was sort of random to me. Because I thought Santino was done with the whole Antonio thing. Like, he got his rematch, lost it, lost the belt to him. And I thought Antonio moved on. He fought Zack Ryder at the pay-per-view. But in this match, Oksana, the first time ever that Oksana fucks up. She was on the apron, on the ropes. And I don't know if it was Santino that bumped into the ropes and she fell over. It looked like she hurt her ankle or her leg. The referee was either trying to see if she was okay or trying to get her out of the ring. And Antonio hit that move where he throws him up with the uppercut. He had the pin on him. But the referee wasn't there to count, and Santino got the surprise roll-up win. I'm like, oh, Santino just beat the champion. Okay. And then Antonio was so pissed off, I was joking. I said out loud, hey, he should dump her, get rid of her. But I was just thinking that like out loud. I didn't think he was really going to do it. He grabs the mic and he says, we're finished in five different languages. He broke up with Oksana over one fuck-up. I'm a little surprised by that, even though I, I made a joke and said, yeah, you should break up with her. She just cost him the match. I'm surprised he did it. It was his girlfriend, I thought. She screwed over or played with Theodore Long to get this guy a job here. Uh, and, and the first time she messes up, he breaks up with her. I guess he had good reason because he doesn't want to have this girl or any girl be the reason why his career turns for the bad. So I don't blame him, but it just seemed like it was just out of nowhere. There wasn't any build-up to it. It was just like, you know what? I want to get rid of you. So I don't know where Oksana goes from here. Maybe Antonio becomes more serious on his own with the U.S. title. Who knows? I'm sort of interested by that. And that brings us to our main event tag team match. Kane and Daniel Bryan versus Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow. We've seen these guys throughout the show quite a few times, and you know what? I don't know. What can you say? Is it really a complaint to see the tag team 
division, tag team champion showcase this much on one show, I guess I shouldn't be complaining, really, when you think about it. It's, it's a step in the right direction as far as the tag team division goes. Plus, you had other tag teams down there, like the Uso brothers, uh, Ty, uh, Tyus O'Neal and Darren Young, Tyson Kidd and Justin Gabriel. They were out there, I guess, to scout the champions. I don't know. It sort of sucks that Cody Rhodes just attacked him with a chair, so it was a DQ. I wanted to see someone win the match, but... Kane and Daniel Bryan going crazy with the chairs, attack every tag team. In a way, it sucks because it makes the prime time players, Tyus O'Neill and Darren Young, look weak. They just got done on Monday taking out Mysterio and Sin Cara, saying they mean business. They can like, want you know take with what's theirs and get their title shot. And then just a couple of days later, they get their ass handed to them, along with every other tag team by. <laughs> You know, Kane and Daniel Bryan, like, where does that take them? Where does it take every other tag team? They just get demolished by Kane and Daniel Bryan. And Kane and Daniel Bryan, they, they destroyed Damien Sandow with the chairs. I'm like, Jesus Christ. And then for a moment, it looked like they were going to work together or at least be a cohesive unit for a second. And then, they, and then they ended the show arguing again. I'm like, these guys... You know, they get the one moment of working together and then as soon as they talk to each other, they can't talk to each other. They talk to each other and they're at each other's throats. I'm the tag team champion. No, I'm a, it's like what? It's the craziest tag team, craziest tag team situation. I don't really know what to make of this. I don't know where it's going to go. I don't see how they could be tag team champions for much longer. It's crazy when you think about it. So yeah, ultimately SmackDown started off crazy with Edge trying to deal with them and then ended crazy having Kane and Daniel Bryan pretty much be the whole focal point of the show and you don't really know where that's going to go. I don't know, was it a good show? I'm going to say it was different and it was surprising and it was not what I was expecting. So I guess that means it was a good show. <laughs> I don't know, I'm, I'm still sort of confused by it. Anyways, guys, that's what I think of SmackDown. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of SmackDown. I will leave you with my underrated superstar of this week. And this week, I will say Mason Ryan. Now, Mason Ryan came in as a part of CM Punk's new Nexus. He took out John Cena. When I first saw him, I'm like, oh, hey, Batista's half-brother. Who knew? And he was the powerhouse of the group. Then the new Nexus broke up like nothing. And Mason Ryan has been sort of dwindling ever since. He had a couple of months where it looked like he was going to get a push, fighting Dolph Ziggler and Jack Swagger, but then nothing. I see him on Superstars every once in a while, but he doesn't really win too many matches. And he, and he was supposed to be a part of AW's stable, along with Tyus O'Neill and Darren Young. But then when AW left, that idea went away. So, yeah, I don't know. Like, he's an he's an okay wrestler, I, I guess. I just I think he has a cool look. He's a big guy. If he's not that great in the ring, maybe he's still green. That's why you haven't seen him that often. At least let's let's make him someone's bodyguard. You know, let's that's how you can get people to not only recognize him, notice him, but just to get him out there. I think he has a cool look. He could be the next Batista. Batista started off as like not really a bodyguard, but with Evolution, with Ric Flair, Triple H, and he eventually became. A main eventer. I think you could sort of groom Mason Ryan into a similar, if not the same, type of deal. But, anyways, let me know what you think of Mason Ryan, if you think I'm off on this, or if you agree. Anyways, thanks for watching, and peace, subscribe, later!